From the center of the galaxy, this is Force Center, a show about Star Wars, pop culture, the ultimate adventure, life itself, and sometimes you travel and news breaks while you travel and we're back. I'm Ken Hepson. I'm Joseph Scrimshaw, and we were we were both traveling as the Empire made a big uh, trailer noise that went wow, and people got very <laughs> Very excited, but we we're happy to be here to talk about the the Tales of the Empire trailer, right, Ken? Yes, indeed. Thank you for the patience to allow us to get to this point. Uh, Jennifer is out today watching the trailer for herself to take it all in. This was very exciting stuff. We're going to break it down. I love when news drops and either you kind of think it's coming, you're not sure if it's coming, or you're completely caught off guard, which was the case for me. Probably in a Boston area, Dunkin' Donuts getting my fourth Boston cream donut of the weekend <laughs> and going, oops, we got to check this out. But here we are. Yes, you're correct. We're diving in. Yeah, and, and I had, a, I had a, a, a reaction. I won't put an emotion on it. Uh, mm. I went and I watched the trailer. I enjoyed it. I saw on social media that people were excited about it, and I am excited about it, and I'm excited that people are excited. But I also had that, like, wait, didn't, didn't they announce Tales of the Jedi Season 2? It wasn't a cryptic... You know, Dave Filoni wearing a, you know, Tails question mark T-shirt. They straight up <laughs> announced Tales of the Jedi season two. So I had a, this is great, but is it uh, Tales of the Empire and Tales of the Jedi? Or mm. as the was suggested by the trailer, the, the burning away of the Jedi logo, uh, that it was, uh, yeah, we announced uh, Tales of the Jedi season two. But what we meant was we were doing a, another season of shorts and we wanted to surprise you all. They're actually doing Tales of the Empire and they're currently doing a merchandising uh, mm. thing that's, you know, they've done it before for like seasons of Mandalorian where, you know, mm. or during Kenobi, like every week, here's a couple new drops and they're doing that currently right. for the Empire. So it feels like they're in a little season of, yeah. of building up to May 4th. They're like, you know what? Let's celebrate the baddies. Um, that's right. That's right. Yeah. So that was um, my reaction of enjoying the trailer, but also being just a little bit confused about the, well, is there a Tales of the Jedi? Mm -hmm. Um so I again, I definitely want to uh, talk about what is actually in the trailer, but this is a little mm -hmm. unlike us, but I'm just being honest of like, first, I want to talk about what's not there <laughs> because uh -huh. we talk so much uh, us on Force Center and everybody else in the community about guesses, expectations, dreams for Tales of the Jedi season two. So how do you feel about uh, that? This isn't another Tales of the Jedi season, uh, particularly, I think what I'm responding to is we just had so much speculation Mm -hmm. that as uh, that Asajj's story mm. with her resurrection and the fate of Quinlan Voss uh might be in a Tales of Jedi season 2 since we got her appearance in uh Bad Batch and we got the confirmation from official sources that there is more Asajj storytelling coming a lot of people went like it's right around the corner uh May 4th Tales of Jedi season 2 uh, and mm. that is now mm. not the case so how mm. do you feel about that I, I'm happy to start here and be <clears throat> honest about it. I, I there had been some very strong rumors from some some sources that are, that are not, I, that are now we can say I guess confirmed because this this was almost predicted to a T by 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 a little small circle. And even when I heard those rumors, I was like, yeah, that's great. Tail, and, it, and the rumor was Tales of the Empire. Mm -hmm. That's great. But man, there's a lot on the table with Tales of the Jedi. I think we all <laughs> fell in love with the potential for that format and those stories. The speculation you, me, and Jennifer had of uh, Luke and young Ben and and uh, all these characters in the past that you know you could follow, uh, you know uh, uh, Plo Koon leading up to his final flight in Order sixty six, or maybe he eject ejected. Uh, I, I think that speaks to the passion for those first six episodes. That the the, the Dooku stuff, the Ahsoka stuff's great. Mm -hmm. um, it's great. The Dooku episodes are some of my favorite Star Wars storytelling. And so I think even when the rumors and then have it confirmed with this trailer and have the Jedi burned away and it doesn't look like they're, you know, we're not getting Tales Jedi, Tales Empire, Tales whatever on one day. I was slightly disappointed for what was lost or mm -hmm. what is not out yet, including possibly with Ventress. But I'm also very excited about this trailer, very excited about these stories. So... Hey, it's a blessing. Uh, we have so much Star Wars to get to, and we're getting so much Star Wars still these last 10 years plus. Uh, so I'll choose to look at it that way, that we could still get some of those blanks that Dave loves to fill in <laughs> with these stories. Yeah, and I think that is the connective tissue of what is he interested in filling in and what is mm -hmm. on his mind and why, because what future storytelling is coming down the line. Mm -hmm. um, I, it, I, I think for me, I, I was... Um, this is an opportunity to let go because I've got very excited about Tales of mm. the Jedi. 
and when mm-hmm. I was like, okay, it, it isn't, it is Tales of the Empire. And then I, I honestly went online expecting to see people grumpy and I didn't see anyone grumpy. I saw oh. everybody excited about what was there instead of mad about what wasn't that we speculated. So I yeah. thought that was great and thought, hey, the internet for once is doing a better job than me. So I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to let go uh, mm-hmm. and, and talking about it as a part of my process. Uh, I, I think for mm-hmm. me, it's um, it wasn't just the Asajj thing. You know, I was really excited about that possibility. Mm-hmm. Um I think there's some there's some Jedi storytelling I'm extremely hungry for. Um, I, I mm. felt like the first season of Ahsoka created a d- deep desire in me to to know more about Sabine's first training uh, journey, mm-hmm. first mm-hmm. attempt to train with Ahsoka, because I want to know those emotional truths. I want to know how those characters came together to try that first training attempt that that they then broke up from. Um, I'm still curious emotionally to, to know Ahsoka's exact whereabouts during the Civil War, uh, the Galactic Civil War, you know, mm-hmm. and, and I, some t- fans think they have the answer. I, I don't think it's clear at all if she was trapped, stranded on Moorband, if she mm. abstained. Uh, I, I'm, that's a thing I'd love to see. Luke and young Ben. Hey, Leia's training with Luke on screen. High yeah. Republic characters. The amount of Jedi stories I'm so excited for, I think, um, you know, is something that I want to continue to be excited for and hope that they get around to. Uh, but I also want to be able to <laughs> Jedi like uh, let it go. And it's exciting to me. Not I, I'm excited about Tales of the Empire, but I'm also excited for the possibility that if this continues, that this could be just a really broad anthology um, like um, the the original Clone Wars series is like, yep, the spine of it is Ahsoka. Anakin mm-hmm. and Obi-Wan and Padme are the main characters, but you have an episode that's just Yoda. You have an episode, two-parter, where it's Mace and Jar Jar. You have an episode where it's it's Asajj. And maybe back in the day, people were mad at those as being filler episodes, but I love the Clone Wars because it has a solid spine, but it's mm-hmm. also an anthology. And I think thinking about this Tales of series as mm-hmm. it's kind of like the original Clone Wars. It's an anthology. It's wherever it needs and wants to go. I, I'm really excited for that potential. Uh, you know, bring on Tales of the Bounty Hunter. Bring on Tales of Rebellion. Bring on Tales of Resistance. We have a chance to do something. Now, I will say, and this sounds cynical, but I don't think it's cynical. At least I'm trying not to be cynical. You know, the the, the, the felony of it all so far, these two volumes very much feel about him going, hey, there's some things I want to tell. And mm-hmm. some things that he's understanding the fans want to hear. The Barris Afi of it all we'll get to. Mm-hmm. And and it's not just related to his stories. He's also been promoted where he has to worry about everyone's stories now. Mm-hmm. But it seems like there's the great purpose. And I think some of my excitement goes beyond that, right? Where I have to pull myself a, back a little bit to go like, d- does Dave himself want to have Luke and young Ben? I, I think he might. Uh, does Dave himself want to go anywhere? And, and, and as he gets higher up, maybe other people will get involved. And there's some wonderful writers and people we love, Jennifer Corbett and Amanda mm-hmm. Rose Munoz. Uh, I'd love to see them get their hands on this kind of anthology theories, series because I agree with you that once you start thinking about it and these little bite-sized chunks, oh, it, it's just it's it's just so intriguing, the possibilities. So we'll see where it goes. Yeah, I think like learning the fate of Yaddle. Um, I know it was an interpretation mm-hmm. of the Ahsoka novel, but seeing that thread of her trying to walk away from helping people and deciding to come back. It's like he mm-hmm. set up a sandwich shop and instead of selling sandwich, he's selling like answers <laughs> to little beats you're curious about. So yes. <laughs> I feel like we're all lined up at his at his answers deli going, I'm putting in an order <laughs> for Full this answer. You know, come on, yeah. you yinzers, come get some answers. You, you set up shop and you sold me how Yaddle died. Now I'd really like a Ahsoka's and Sabine's first training session on Rye, please. I think it, it, <laughs> it set up that vibe for me. Yeah, I think you could get this. This to me now feels like the spot to get Cad Bane and Boba Fett. Yep, you know, exactly. all right, let's finally get it. Let's finally do it. I, I'd love to. I'd love to see. Yeah, uh, I think what was interesting to me about this, even though it was like Jedi melted away, Empire mm. dark, gritty. It also felt like, in in some ways, it is still the tales of Ahsoka because these are two villains who have their own story in their own right, which we're going to talk plenty about. But they are the shadows that help define Ahsoka. Yes. So it also kind of feels like, well, yes. if this came about and Dave was like, "What do you want to do next?" Either it was his idea or somebody else's within Lucasfilm to do Empire. He's like, "Great, no Ahsoka." It's still kind of going to be about Ahsoka because these characters inform mm-hmm. her and quite possibly the second season of Ahsoka. 
Yeah, I agree with that. I'm giggling a little bit. Uh, the Ahsoka of it all. And and he mm-hmm. should be very proud of that character and he should be protective of the character. And uh, there's so many wonderful stories. There's still, you know, the the, the campfire conversation with Luke that you would mm. have always dreamed about. So, But I, I think you're right. There is uh, shadows of Ahsoka all through this. Right. Ahsoka telling Leia about her mother. I, I want that more than anything now. Um, so we, we're, we've talked about this for the most part, but I just want to uh, make sure mm. there's nothing else here uh, that you want to talk about. So since since the show, if it continues, maybe there won't be a third season, but it's now a Tales of the Blank. Um, Tales of the Bounty Hunters is something that people have been excited about. Uh, a lot of people mm-hmm. have a connection to those old books. Tales of the Rebellion would be fascinating. Yeah. Uh, Tales of the Bartenders <laughs> with Wuhair and Mas Kanata. Why not? Um, if if you're approaching this anthology series is a deli that sells answers <laughs> <laughs> and you're broadening that out far beyond the Jedi to just any little beat, any little moment, any character, are there other things that, that you can find yourself sort of salivating for if the if it's an anthology series and it's wide open to the entire galaxy? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, I, I want to... S- Tales of resistance would be interesting to get into maybe some of the uh, the political landscape of 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 leia i'm not saying a full-on adaptation of bloodlines but just some of those moments with leia the warmonger and how oh, look at her just trying to military on up again because she loves fighting these wars and some of that stuff that led to um the the first order coming back would be good but also uh you know setting up the new republic government and and how is that working and um, could you get some of those characters uh, from that era? You know, uh, tales of uh, tales of the New Republic, and mm-hmm. and have uh, you know Zev flying around with the, the X wing pilots and stuff like that. There, there, there's a lot of that kind of stuff. I'm trying. I'm trying to think of the big answers that I w- would want, and a lot of it's just uh, Leia yelling at other political figures or Mothma yelling at political <laughs> figures. I don't know. Yeah, and you know, sometimes there's the answers like you know that that Yaddle episode is great because it really is it's like great. what what whatever happened to Yaddle we didn't know, but also just seeing mm. Dooku erase you know uh, the the records about uh, mm-hmm. Camino. Um, but it's also just like the emotional mm. answers I- I- as well. And yeah. just seeing the arc of Dooku as a character, seeing how Ahsoka came back to the fight, seeing how Bale kept the faith, all that kind of thing. Right. Um, so those characters were like, yeah, I'd be really happy with that answer in terms of like literally plot would happen, but also just like w- wanting the opportunity to feel the emotional journey. I-, I think getting, getting Boba in that armor since they walked up to the edge of it at, in Clone Wars with those episodes mm-hmm. they never produced, um, if that doesn't happen in Bad Batch, that would be very satisfying to me. Um, I, I was thinking about Tales of Rebellion, because uh, that's an ob- mm-hmm. obvious kind of yeah. place to go from Tales of the Empire and um, jump around in the time. And I, I realized, it, no joke, this is not a Mustache joke. This is not an mm. Alex Damon um, joke. <laughs> mm. I would love, actually, Biggs. I would love yeah. the story of Biggs mm-hmm. wanting, like, being Luke's older brother mentor figure, wanting to get mm-hmm. off Tatooine, the Academy is the only mm-hmm. way to go, and realizing this ain't for me, mm-hmm. and I'm I'm getting out of here. That mm-hmm. it would be really powerful to see that just sort of nuts and bolts story. We we've seen, you know, uh, uh, Wedge and uh, I believe it is Javi, right? Um, yeah. Uh, defect in Rebels, but that's different than the, the this kind of story, which could be like really small and really intimate of mm. that mm-hmm. feeling of because that's that's always been kind of canon question of like if Luke hates the Empire, why does he want to go to the Academy? Like because it's this brutal real world thing of there's nowhere else to go. It's the only right. way off the planet. Right. It's a part of the power of the empires. Like there's nowhere else to go until mm-hmm. the rebellion gets enough uh, uh, weight to it. So seeing that very real, like big story of like, I need to get out of here. And this is the only way out off the planet. Mm-hmm. Is, yeah. Anyway. Mm, no, that's a good one. That's a good one. Just call it tales of the mustache. Yep. <laughs> How Just many people expected us to spend more time talking about bigs? <laughs> At the top. All right. Uh, thank you, everyone, for your patience. We're going to get into what we are actually being treated to of this great Tales of the Empire, focusing on Barris, Offy, and Morgan Elspeth. Very exciting. Uh, let's talk about what's uh, going to come to our screens on May 4th. Uh, Ken, we, we're not going to do the breakdown by breakdown of every uh, frame of the trailer. Other people uh, do that uh, far better and far earlier. Then us, we're going to talk about some of the uh, the mm-hmm. ideas, the characters, what's interesting to us. So what's interesting to you about 
Barris Offie? What are you hoping to learn? And how does this focusing on this character have ripples to other Star Wars uh, uh, storytelling? I, I'm looking forward. To, it seems like a cheat answer. I'm looking forward to her fate because her fate is tied to what I think would be her final choice. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm not just talking about whether or not she lives or dies and where she shows up later on. But this is clearly a story of someone who, as well documented in, in uh, the um, season five ending uh, arc with Ahsoka, wrongly framed for the bombing that this person did. There is uh, what we sometimes talk about, this self, this righteous beginning that turns self-righteous, this this uh, justice that turns to vengeance, all these kind of things of, 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 of it's the Saw Gerrera factor, another, uh, Tales of Saws, another series mm-hmm. I like to see. Of, of and, and, and this line of mercy only breeds defeat, but I will help you overcome this weakness the Grand Inquisitor talking to her. And so this, the fact that She's becoming an Inquisitor. Uh, she joins the program. What's the reason why? Is it is it resignation? Is it uh, my anger has led me here? And what's going to change her? I just you just get the sense. We're going to talk to the talk about the details of Morgan L. Smith, but there's these two bookends of your choices and your anger and what to do with them and how they fuel you and how they fuel uh, your view of the galaxy at this point in the timeline. And I am. I hate to just say, I want to find out what happens. Of course, that's what we're going to watch. But I think where she ends up is going to be an amazing case study for me. Yeah, it, it was a thrill to see her in the trailer. It was a thrill to finally uh, have an answer because I think we have been on this sort of roller coaster of every mm-hmm. every masked <laughs> inquisitor is like, could it be Beresafi? Because she's it seems mm-hmm. incredibly like that's what would have happened to her. She's right. you know. A, an already broken Jedi rotten in a prison when they're looking right. for Jedi to break that she's already halfway there. So mm-hmm. just, there's just the satisfaction of uh, we have been at, at the answer deli <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, requesting a bear on, on whole wheat uh, and we're getting it. So there's right. that excitement. But then when I watched the trailer and thought like, well, we're, we're seeing a lot of the beats, of the trailer, a lot of the thing, the, the reveal that there, it's yeah. about her, the reveal that she will confront Vader the mm-hmm. relationship with the Grand Inquisitor, all my mind went to is like, oh, this is absolutely, you know, if, if it is, I think it is six episodes, three of each. This is the heart of it is what does she choose? We've, mm-hmm. we've been treated to a decent amount of Inquisitor stories in, in you know, different mediums. Mm-hmm. Um, but she's in this extremely unique position of she was right that the Jedi were dropping the ball. Mm hmm. But she did this sort of very Machiavelli in the ends justify the means uh, act to prove it. Um, so does she feel guilt? Does she feel like she was wrong? Does she feel like I was right about the path of the Jedi, but I was, but I shouldn't have done the bombing. I shouldn't have framed people. I shouldn't have gotten people killed in an effort to stop the war. And you know, I'll kill five people to stop the death of millions. Kind of um, morality. Does she feel validated? Or does she feel like a sucker when the truth of the Clone Wars maybe filters down to her? You know, so her reckoning with her choice is a really interesting starting place. Yeah. Just through this Inquisitor program. Why? To fulfill what need? Because she's broken or because she has a newly shaped belief based on what actually happened? Yeah, no, I, I'm curious how much, you know, as, as we look at the shadows of Ahsoka through, throughout this series of, of you know, I, I say often and we've explored it here of just Ahsoka represents what does it mean to be a Jedi for real in different eras, mm-hmm. right? That's a question that I think the character is always asking of us. What does actually mean? And, and, and you talk about Barris waking up on dawn of the next day after a safe and secure society is, is, is founded behind this new emperor and, and feeling like a sucker. If she has this almost a retroactive justice for the Jedi thing of, yes, I was right to question them. I was right to say this was all wrong or, or a lot of it was, was, was you know, just an incorrect approach or what, what did I misunderstand of it and how could I have done this better and how could I have you – know, all those things come back to her saying I've got to make a different choice. Again, and I don't know to what degree is she – Sneaking into the Inquisitors, we've had a little bit of those beats uh, with with Riva. Uh, you know, I, so I'm not saying they're going to repeat anything. They're going to find an interesting way to explain um, what she's doing there uh, and, and how far she's going to take it. But I, I, your idea of was I a sucker? Mm-hmm. <laughs> what am I going to do with that information? Yeah, 
I, what do you I, mean I, to be I, a Jedi? Yeah. I think there is a shadow of Reva because there's much about this story that uh, I I trust that it will be y- unique and specific because Bears has a different story yeah. in her her journey her her reflection of Ahsoka her um, not being a young Padawan as Reva mm-hmm. was during Order sixty six mm-hmm. but rather you know uh, a disgruntled teen who was raised mm-hmm. to you know uh, preserve life and then mm-hmm. is made to be a child soldier and thrown out there in war. Uh, mm-hmm. And resenting that, so she she's a different character than Riva because of her life experiences, right. but with the Vader of it, uh, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's the question to me of is there going to be some similar similarity there where she knows who Vader is? She's got a Anakin's the one who captured her and brought her to justice, right? Um, who figured Anakin's the one who you know figured it all out? Um, so what she wants from Vader is interesting mm-hmm. to me. I kind of feel like it's not, I, I kind of feel like this is going to be Barris's story. Like maybe she yeah. survives and maybe she can be, maybe she's an opponent to Ahsoka, but I more get the vibe of like, she's not secretly, you know, 18th sister, you know? Right, right, right. That this is going to be her journey. I kind of expect Barris Offie's story to come to a close. And I kind of expect it to contrast Morgan's that where Morgan's very clear in her yes. dialogue and we know the the end of her story of mm-hmm. i manipulate the empire to get the power i need to do right by my sisters at least that's mm-hmm. the way i i think it's going to go right but there's that such clarity of like i know exactly how i want to use my anger and bear is having mm. to choose like mm. how do mm. i want to use my anger do i want to um, reveal vader do i want to strike vader down the way reva <laughs> did or do i mm. want to just I mean, is there a way that she's just going to say, I'm, I'm not let herself be struck down because she's not going to participate ultimately? Is that, you know, could that be re- right. uh, Bears' big victory of like, I went through this whole program, I marched up to it, I stood face to face to Vader, and I know it's Anakin, and I just said no, and he struck me down. And that's, a, you know. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a breaking of the of, of the cycle of violence by sacrificing yourself to break it. Uh, yeah, could could be. Uh, part, part of it at play there. I, I kind of agree with you too. I don't know why deep down I feel this, but I, I feel as though there will be a conclusion to her character here mm-hmm. um, that I don't think she shows up on Pretty in season two. Uh, going, hi, hi, Soka. <laughs> yeah. I'm here to rescue you. Uh, I've had a change of heart. I thought about some things. I just, yeah, I think we'll know. Think yeah. We'll know. Yeah. So yeah, very excited uh, about all that. We can talk about it more with uh, Vader's appearance there. But let's talk about Morgan Elsmith. Um, mm-hmm. I'm very excited to just see more of the character and to get you know some uh, interesting uh, emotional answers. So what are you hoping to learn, and, and how do you think focusing on Morgan impacts uh, other Star Wars storytelling? Yeah, I I, w- I think we're going to understand the relationship more. We're going to get some clearly some answers on on Thrawn and his relationship to the night sisters and how he views them or, or views their story mm-hmm. how and how similar i mean you're talking to someone who even in modern canon it's like hey i'm going to go study the empire to see if you know they're a threat to my people or what can i use to help them it's all about um the chiss before the empire but i'm going to go stand next to uh palpatine and carry out his deeds and you see a lot of that with morgan right mm-hmm. that's exactly what she's playing so i'm trying to see how that affects and how that'll give an answer going forward of, of uh how they came together how thrawn thinks how thrawn works i love that it just but i want to explore this idea of, of anger as a shaky shaky foundation for strength mm-hmm. and and how we can study that again a character study of this and how we're probably, especially when it comes to the Night Sisters, anyone familiar with, enough with the story in the Clone Wars, it's already in a spot where you have a lot of empathy and understanding of where their pain comes from and how they were done wrong. And mm-hmm. even though they might be dancing with the dark side a little more than I would like, um, <laughs> you know, or like too, um, they mostly just were themselves, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and, and and so this is a much like Barris, the start of their of her anger is understood and maybe even justified to a, a, a degree. But to, to to play that out, to play that string out, uh, I'm curious to study that path as it relates to her. Yeah, um, 
I, I, I'm, I'm equally excited for them. I think, you know, a long-term Clone Wars fan finally getting Barriss' story, Barriss' story only becoming more interesting as, as Inquisitors become such a big part of Star Wars. But, but there's been so many mysteries with Morgan. And, you know, the, the first season of Ahsoka uh, had a lot, of, a lot of mysteries and a lot of tip of the iceberg storytelling. And how Morgan exactly related to the Night Sisters was one of them. She does look different than the other Night Sisters. Yeah, uh, a big part of her arc seems to be the the validation that uh, she heard the dreams, the, the whispered dreams of the other Night Sisters from afar, and they give her the gift. She gives, sacrifices herself to become a full Night Sister, and it's like mm -hmm. it's like she accomplished everything she ever dreamed of to be a sort of full Night Sister. Mm -hmm. So there seems to be interesting things here about the culture of Night Sisters and what Morgan's actually actual story is that I think will will inform us about Morgan's character, but also inform us about Night Sisters and their culture. If mm. she is in some ways, and uh, our friend Alex Damon over at Star Wars Explained has a great breakdown video of, I can't even remember, some extremely obscure source that has a hint. Uh, oh, it's, it's, I think it's a story from that Clone Wars book. Uh, oh, that, and... Sorry, yeah, Filoni's yeah. wife, partner, wrote it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that hints at, ooh, mm -hmm. could this be Morgan and a character who was adopted? I don't remember the details. I think they're yeah, going to be yeah. fleshed out here. And that's what I'm excited mm -hmm. for. One of my favorite uh, lines and ideas in the Kenobi show is how Kenobi relates himself to Leia of he has vague memories of his, his family of birth, but the Jedi became his family. Star Wars has such a profound uh, uh, idea of found family, everything from friends to, you know, e e even if you're the, the child of adoption, those are your parents. You choose your identity with Ray. Mm. And everything is so interesting in Morgan's role in Ahsoka is about wanting identity, wanting to be a full mm. Night Sister. That I'm really mm. excited to kind of learn about night sister philosophy of adoption and belonging and in meaning and identity and what makes you a night sister mm. what makes you night sister what makes you a jedi what makes you an inquisitor mm -hmm. these core yeah. questions becoming yeah becoming. um and i think and then i think you know fans had this question had this discussion of you know night sisters uh they're known for for hating the oppressors who destroyed their planet. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we got the the glimpse of Grievous uh, wrecking havoc on Dathomir. Great. Mm -hmm. um, but we also got the like, okay, now we're going to learn how she became a, 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 you know, a valuable ally of Thrawn in the empire. And what's her relationship? Does she not see Grievous as an extension of Palpatine? Mm -hmm. Does she not know that clear lineage between what happened to Dathomir and the power uh, of the empire being the emperor mm -hmm. or is she like, I, I know exactly what the empire is. And I know Palpatine is the one ultimately to blame mm -hmm. for my people's destruction, but I'm going to use the tool that he built the horror of the empire to get what I want, which is mm -hmm. the, the resurgence of my people, the night sisters. How, how are you feeling about that element of the story of, of understanding what Morgan knows, what she thinks, why she is hand in hand with the oppressors. Yeah, and what justifications in her soul does she take is is interesting mm -hmm. to me, and and you know, I, it's it's so fascinating when we first meet her on Corvus, and I'm I'm really excited to go back in a weird way. Mm -hmm. um, she to me is that she's a you know this imperial magnet. She's this. Uh, I, I took her as this uh, rich uh, daughter of shipbuilders, and that it was from city, uh, you know, from from industry, and and, and she was providing ships, and, then, and and all that becomes true in a way. But um, to throw in the angle that it that it's um, much deeper, that it is is much more about she wasn't just a, a, a corporate opportunist. She wasn't mm -hmm. a capitalist looking for a way to make money. The empire is the way to do it. That was a, almost now we might discover a cover for for her true intentions. And I'm I'm I'm, I'm ex I love I'm ready to explore the core of, of, of who she is. And, and this is someone who you know we see we see her kind of almost hiding her stripes so to speak as a night mm -hmm. sister and what that meant and and uh, what formed her early on is, is, is a fascinating starting point with this character that I, I, I loved the first, I loved the first appearance of the character. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and the connection to Thrawn was intriguing. I kind of thought she died and not that I wanted the character to be a one shot and out, but I, 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 I've been pleasant. My, my, my journey with the character is to be continued. I find myself continued to, to be surprised about how much I enjoy the character. Meaning I just, I thought she was a great seasoning for that second episode of, of Mando. 
and she's yeah, no, that second down. season, yeah, no, there's uh, yeah, she's fabulous in that, and the Beskar spear mm-hmm. that reappears here is is great yeah. and all that. Um, yeah, I really loved her her role in Ahsoka because I think it it had it, there was so much in Ahsoka with this longing to return to what was mm-hmm. to get back to your culture, um, and in her role of succeeding winning she's one of the people who has a victory she gets what she wants the night sisters are returned to power uh or at least returned to dathomir and and the ability um but yeah she she uh, i'm just so fascinated with what her uh what she can tell us about the night sisters because i love marin in in the first jedi fallen Mm -hmm. order uh video game and i love asajj's journey but she just seems like she has a different relationship to the night sisters and i can't wait to see it get fleshed out And, and kind of like her role in Ahsoka season one, uh, Barris is, is a character who lost her community in the Jedi mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. might be bleeping glad they're gone. <laughs> right. Uh, whereas Barris and Con- or, uh, Morgan in contrast to Barris it mm-hmm. will do anything to return her people. It's an interesting way to look at it too. I'm yeah. <laughs> Whatever <laughs> Barris wants, I don't think it's <laughs> the resurrection of the Jedi order. Right. But yeah. yeah. Be yep. very interesting to see. Um, okay, so there's uh, lots of uh, intriguing characters returning, and I think this is a good point to to reflect. Mm. This is a two minute trailer. It's really short, but mm-hmm. we see a lot, and a these lot. are shorts. This isn't a <laughs> sixteen episode see, yeah. season of half hour shows. We saw a lot of this percentage wise. We saw a decent chunk in terms yeah, of yeah. big reveals. We saw a decent chunk. We already saw a lot of this show, uh, including a massive list of uh, of characters that are familiar to us. Uh, Thrawn. Uh, we saw the fourth sister, who is the Inquisitor from the Obi-Wan Kenobi show. Um, the Grand Inquisitor, uh, Wing, who was in that original Mandalorian episode with Morgan Ellsworth. Uh, Grievous. Uh, uh, Merrick, the mystery Inquisitor from Ahsoka, who exploded into gas. Um, mm-hmm. The unnamed Inquisitor, Ahsoka Beheads, and Tales of the Jedi Season 1. And, and that guy, Darth Vader. So, yeah. um, and maybe even even more. Uh, it's a lot of characters mm-hmm. that we know. So, mm-hmm. out of that whole lineup of, of returning characters, who is intriguing to you and why? Uh, you know, I'll, t- I'll tell you why, Darth Vader. <laughs> I'll tell you why. Um, I love exploring Vader. We've done such a great job, uh, both in the Ahsoka show. It's some of my favorite uh, Anakin slash Vader stuff. Mm-hmm. Um I, like you, huge fan of the Kenobi series. Uh, love revisiting Vader there. The comics. I've drifted off the comics. We spent a lot of time with Vader, and I'm okay with some Vader breaks, right? Mm-hmm. I don't need Vader in every story. Uh, we've also, we've cracked the the, the mask. We've looking at the broken uh, man Twice. machine yeah. behind him. Uh, this Just this shot was enough to remind me, oh, yeah, that guy's a threat. <laughs> He's a problem. Uh, there, the way that it, it came across in the trailer, I want to see if, and that could be it, by the way, right? But you know, the idea of him and Barris having even a conversation is intriguing to me. But it's not unlike Palpatine showing up in Bad Batch just to do a political thing, and the and the 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 alarm and the hushed, and you're just kind of like, oh yeah, that's one of our big baddies. I like that Vader here. I'm not saying I'm praising his uh, power here. I'm just saying I like that it was just like. Don't forget, Darth Vader, Darth Vader will cut you. <laughs> He's to be reckoned with. I yeah. love that. No, I mean, I think I w- I'm was. i really excited to see Vader in this context because it is about, you know, mm-hmm. he and Barris. He's totally informed by Barris. We're, we're not just seeing Vader. We're seeing Vader through Barris's eyes. Of, yeah. In a in relatively recent timeline wise, you'll know, see exactly what it is, uh, exactly mm-hmm. when Inquisitor, you know, program is uh, up and running like this. But mm-hmm. to see, uh, you know, she knew the Anakin that would do anything to preserve, uh, to save Ahsoka and in theory mm-hmm. to preserve the Jedi Order and mm-hmm. him being, he, he, I'm sure he passed Grand Inquisitor in the halls. Is, yeah. He has a different relationship with Barris, and so to see mm-hmm. that um, that side of him, because Barris will try to see that side of him, is is fascinating. It's also just for yeah. me. Um, we talk often of our perspective growing up, uh, Gen X, and growing up with uh, uh, Obi Wan Kenobi's line of Vader helped the Empire hunt down and destroy the Jedi, and then 
year, years go along and it's oh, the Order 66 and it's the Inquisitors. But there's mm -hmm. still that power of like, it goes back to that Kenobi line. And this is how he did it by being in charge of these Inquisitors, hunting mm -hmm. down every little remnant yeah. of, of the Jedi or other force sensitive threats. And so much of the Vader in charge of the team of Inquisitors story has been in publishing. It's been in comic books mostly. Yeah, yeah. So I'm just excited yeah. to see it on screen and for people who don't or, or, or can't um, enjoy the publishing side to see that, that side of Vader, that side of that story as a team, the leader, the brutal leader of a team of Jedi hunters is fun to see uh, we haven't seen that vader on screen a ton mm -hmm. we've seen him you know given orders and that in uh kenobi to the inquisitors we've seen a little bit of it in like video games but not in something that's kind of like this open to the wider public who's really only going to watch things not read mm -hmm. or play video games i'm with you uh um and and it's interesting i've had a my journey with the Inquisitors or the Inquisitorius has been, a, it's been an interesting one, going back to the beginning when the Grand Inquisitor was um, the Inquisitor in the, in, the, in the show at that point in time. I, I going, going back to Kenobi quote and, and all that stuff, of, of, I wasn't sure of what to think. It's like, do I, do I accept this idea that there was a, a squadron of former Jedi or Force Sensitive with red blades hunting down the Jedi with helicopter blades, which I, I don't, I don't know if I fully come around on. I'm not, <laughs> I, I don't have angst on them like I did a few years ago, I will admit. But I, I, I. I just am so intrigued by the Inquisitors more than I ever thought I would be. If that makes sense. And it is mm -hmm. Riva. I'm such a big fan of the Riva character. Mm -hmm. uh, the second was second sister in uh, the first um, uh, Jedi Fallen Order game. It's, is I think is done really well. And mm -hmm. I, by the way, I don't want to. I I, I, I I like when we run into Inquisitors who are like, yeah, no, I'm good with my decision. Let's hunt down these Jedi dogs. Like I'm good. Mm -hmm. I don't need everyone to be like, I've got some pain I'm working through or. I got, but I like when they explore that. And by the way, it all again, this is why I like the, the use of Vader here. What, I don't know how deep they'll get into it. But we're talking about two characters, Elspeth and Barris, who have a lot of anger and have a lot of purpose behind their anger. And you got the king of that in Anakin Skywalker, mm -hmm. of where that will, the, the, the poster cyborg for <laughs> the pain that causes. Uh, and and I'm, I'm intrigued to have him there. Anyways, it's all exciting. And, and I I also say this, so I think I got one over too by the Inquisitors uh, being mysterious and having these numbers and getting confused. Yeah, I don't mm. remember who all of them are. <laughs> you know? um, I, I, there's something I really – I just – they've done a great job with them. And to your point, as they rolled out a little bit more, you know, live action, Kenobi, one thing. But like can you imagine if they're – in a movie at any point or something like that mm -hmm. on a large scale. I, I'd like what, to see what people think of them. They're, I mean, they're, <laughs> they are like the uh, probe droids at the beginning of Empire Strikes Back. They have just been sh <laughs> yeah, yeah. spread out across all Star Wars storytelling. Mm -hmm. You know, we meet mm -hmm. them in Rebels. There's a bunch of stuff to track in the Vader comic books. They're popping up in the Jedi uh, Fallen right. Order game. They're popping up in live action in Kenobi. Uh, mm -hmm. Now they're here and uh, it's, um, it, it is that kind of, Star Wars fan, if you're in deeper and tracking it all, mm. it's fun to see where will the Inquisitors pop up. And I'll be honest, <laughs> that was that was one of the biggest pops of the trailer for me of like, this is Inquisitor cleanup because we got a lineup of all of the ones we don't know much about. Merrick mm -hmm. was a mystery. And yeah. maybe we'll get some clarity of like, yep, he was Inquisitor and Morgan reanimated him uh, for, for his mm -hmm. adventures in Ahsoka or their adventures. Um, mm -hmm. The cool mask unnamed inquisitor that ahsoka beheads yeah. uh but honestly i was most most excited about the fourth sister because uh mm -hmm. i really love the kenobi show um and they had some some the reva storytelling was fantastic mm -hmm. uh, but i felt like the rest of the inquisitors you know stomped and snarled a little bit but yeah. kind of didn't go anywhere with their stories yep. and when we had the one inquisitor that we was new the fourth sister, who is the mm -hmm. one who is, uh, appears to be giving, initially guiding Barris. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, when I thought, when I was just like, oh, <laughs> there's an Inquisitor we don't know. Uh, that That's for Kenobi to fight and take down. Right. And then she just kind of nothing happened with her in the show, which is fine. Mm -hmm. It's not, it wasn't Obi-Wan and the Inquisitors. Mm -hmm. um, 
but since that character in Kenobi was just sort of there, I'm really happy to see something be done with that character. Because, like, yeah, if we're going to keep throwing Inquisitors out there, every once in a while, let's clean up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, which one is it? When did they die? What was their viewpoint? All that. Oh, yeah. We're going to have to have some Inquisitor trading cards or a chart and graph <laughs> to track it all. Yeah. Yeah. The brother that might be the sixth brother that Ahsoka killed, but no one can say for sure. And who knows? It could be there could be seven six brothers. It's good. You could just take these numbers. Do they keep going up? Is it like yeah. baseball numbers? Do you retire numbers down the, down the way? Number <laughs> number two is Derek Jeter and the second sister. You can't wear that number anymore. Um, but I'm with you. I, I'm with you. There was um, – I don't even say it as a, as a giant criticism, but the fifth brother, who we were familiar with to a degree, fourth sister, show up. You're right. That's a great description. They stomp and snarl. Uh, but it wasn't their story. And I like that, that there's a well you can go to. And now all the, you know, the, the merit of it all – I understood. I I had I personally had a hearty laugh when he just is sliced in two and disappears in a in a witch uh, haze. Um, but it doesn't mean he didn't exist before, and you can now explore it. In a, maybe. And I, I, by the way, I don't even think you're you're going to see much with him. But I just like that he's there. No. I, yeah. I, this is. It's not. It isn't actually. <laughs> Inquisitors, mm -hmm. line up and give us your backstory. I don't think uh, I don't think Barris is going to go on like a speed meet and greet with all the Inquisitors and yeah. get every Who are answer. You? But Where a were little you? bit more context. <laughs> Fill out them wiki Wikipedia pages just a little bit more. Yeah. Make poor yeah. Alex Damon have to redo his Inquisitors uh, video again. Already uh, out, out of canon. Yep. Already out. Yep. yep. Uh, I'm also just uh, thrilled to see Grievous in live action. Uh, not in live action, excuse me. In modern animation. Um, That's so good it feels like live action. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. We've been recording for a while this Eclipse morning. Um but yeah, like just the 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 advancements in this wonderful Clone Wars style animation to see Grievous back, to see him yeah. in in this great uh, animation, um, it's cool for Grievous. It's also just like a great reminder of what's great about these uh, anthology series is how they touch so many different eras of Star Wars. Yeah, yeah. I, look, I'm I'm really excited. Grievous is a character I've 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 come around on over the years. Meaning, I used to say he was disappointing to me because I wanted, you know, he was hacking and coughing. And then I kind of realized, oh, that's the point. We've discussed it so much. I I love what Grievous represents in the Clone Wars series and in Revenge of the Sith. He is broken. He sold his soul to become more powerful, and he's a coward who runs away. And mm -hmm. his, uh, you know, his little meat sack organs are <laughs> the only <laughs> thing he's got left. And it is a uh, harbinger things to come for Anakin, and that's the point, and that's the purpose. I did see uh, while I was uh, traveling, I watched a couple people uh, talk about the, this trailer, and a lot of people are really excited to see Grievous in a menacing light. And mm -hmm. I really understand that. And I, and, and who knows? Maybe he runs away from this fight too. But there's something to like, all right, yeah, let's see all four of those blades out and let's be really terrified. And it's a reminder of, you know, why he had his position and why he was, um, um, you know, frightening to a lot of people in the galaxy. Yeah, I mean, I think he is frightening in mm -hmm. Clone Wars uh, uh, 3D, uh, you know. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. He yeah. absolutely is. It's devastating when he, uh, in this context, uh, destroys Dathomir. The Lair of Grievous is a great mm -hmm, Clone Wars mm -hmm. episode. But there is that legacy with Grievous of, um, you know, you you taught me the wrestling phrase of uh, of uh, putting someone over right. um, that that uh, idea of how much you set somebody up. Uh, you know, I, I was familiar with that idea from sort of um, uh, uh, comedy so, and how much how much how, how much you build somebody up before they come on stage. Right. Story you, yeah. <laughs> yeah. How much you hype them before they come up on stage. Like, yeah. And and getting Tart Tartakovsky's 2D uh, mm -hmm. did really put Grievous over. Big mm -hmm. time. Uh, mm -hmm. I think more than he had room or intention to be a menace in Revenge of the Sith. You know. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. yeah. We, yeah. We'll, this this might give us a chance to really uh, revisit and highlight the Grievous character. I'd be excited to do that down the line. Yeah. Of yeah. Uh, yeah. Without without being snarky and finger waving, wagging of of I too in two thousand five had the question of why is he coughing. The answer's important. The answer's big for Star Wars, but it's fair to ask, why is this menacing villain coughing? So mm -hmm. he's not going to be coughing here, I don't think. Yeah. Yeah, I can't wait to uh, see him in all of his uh, modern animation glory. Um, good. You you touched on the, uh, the importance of the lessons of the dark side, which I think are all mm -hmm. over this trailer. Um, the trailer uh, features text uh, popping up on the screen there where it says two stories, one path to the dark side, uh, and then Yoda's 
great quote, fear, mm. anger, hate, suffering. Mm -hmm. Um, this is a show that I think maybe people are excited about because of the characters, but also because it is dark and gritty and ominous and pain and anger mm -hmm. and, and rage and uh, everything that can be um, fascinating, a, a chance for mm -hmm. us to look mm -hmm. on the darker side of our natures and, and, and ask ourselves, what if all, all that, that the dark side storytelling in Star Wars is so good at, but mm -hmm. Star Wars storytelling is also ultimately committed to let's have fun with the villains. They, they, yeah. They make real good toys, but the lesson of them is this is horrible. And so how are you feeling about that? When something called Tales of the Empire that does look cool, a lot mm -hmm. of red blades, how do you think it's going to show the folly of the dark side, uh, the tragedy of it? With the suffering. And, and, and do you make others suffer? Do you carry the suffering with you? And, and, and does that break you? Does that cause you to change? and Or does it cause you just to, to keep throwing uh, logs on the on the fire and and fueling the hate and 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 keeping that cycle going it's interesting that it's tales of the empire when that rumor kind of was first circling around um still to this day don't know the details of the series it was just kind of a title uh, and release date floating around the rumor sphere and it was like all right well, this, is, this is a tale of how they built the the adats is it is it uh, the veers's story like w w the rise of moths like what 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 is the tales of the empire and for it to actually start pre-empire, or right at the you know the dawn, I, I'm fascinated by what lessons it will have for us around. You call it the folly of the dark side, um, how this all leads to suffering, and what that suffering is: suffering for you, suffering for others, and suffering for the galaxy. I, I think it's going to be an interesting exploration uh, for uh, such a marketable title. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We've seen you mentioned it. We've got merchandise out there now. I, I have a couple, you know, I don't collect them as much, but I have a couple Empire shirts I've held on to because they're, they're kind of cool. Yeah, no, I, I saw cool. a Morgan action figure uh, when I was in Minneapolis for the holidays mm. and I couldn't stop myself. I was like, ah, yeah, she's great. Gotta get it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think uh, I love using that old Yoda quote, which is so powerful fear, anger, hate, suffering. In that point, as you're saying, of it, it is so easy to uh feel the, a, a flood of energy when you get really angry and you're like mm -hmm. i've had enough and i'm going to do something about it and then i think from there can either be i've i've been angry and now i'm motivated so i'm going to make a, a plan of a practical good thing to do <laughs> or it's, mm -hmm. i flooded with anger i feel motivated so i'm just gonna lash out lash out lash out and mm -hmm. that the story of Star Wars is always that does not bring you happiness. That does not bring you what you want. And, mm -hmm. you know, I think this isn't called Tales of the Sith because of the pedantic. None of these characters are Sith. They're Darksiders. <laughs> right. 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 But I also think it's called Tales of the Empire because I think it's going to be a story about two people who were victimized and wounded mm -hmm. by the dark side, mm -hmm. by the Empire uh, as this manifestation of, of she willing it into existence as a as a form of the dark side that like the dark side become a government uh, is what the empire is is about two characters who are victimized by it caused fear and anger and pain and how do these two characters try to use this system of the empire this extension of the sith mm -hmm. to get what they want with morgan it's real it's fairly clear she yeah. thinks she can use the system of the empire to get what she wants and so will barris's story be the, the system the Empire is trying to use her to get what they want, uh, yeah. to have her be an Inquisitor. So is it going to be a story of her rejecting that system? But I think it's it's fascinating to have that title because it's about two people trying to decide how to function within this system that represents the dark side. Yeah, and I love love it as a as a possible. Again, we got to see these six episodes and see where they go. But a, just a possible exploration of the true building blocks of that Empire that you see mm -hmm. on the T-shirts. Yep. I love that. Yep. Uh, any other specific moments in the trailer that you want to talk about as we wrap up? There's one line in there uh, could apply to the entire series, but it just got me excited. Uh, and, and it's related to some of the stuff you're talking about. But everything comes at a cost. And that belief that either you, you're the one that thinks this is the way of it and I've got you know, to take my cost. I'm going to take it from you. I'm going to get mine. Uh, or that you've got to deliver that the, the cost that people have to pay has to come from you. No mercy. 
Uh, and that was just a thematic sentence. I love those little lines that just are kind of like, oh, here's what this is going to explore, and along with what you're saying there. But in terms of action, um, you know, the, the the weapons that we got, the, you know, uh, the Grievous fighting off, uh, you know, with the, the Night Sister mm-hmm. kind of blades going on there. That looks cool. Explosion scene, battle droids again. I, I, it, it just was a well put together trial. I do agree with you that there's a lot there. I think I got we've got some key beats already kind of shown. We'll see which way they go. But, uh, you know, it's going to happen. And, and But the trailer was effective because it got people excited. So all those little moments, all the explosions, all the blades, all the fighting, all the sirens blaring. I'm excited. Yeah, I'm, I'm very excited, too. Uh, there are a lot of great individual moments. I think I did have the, like, I want to remember that these episodes are short and we, we saw a lot of the pops. And, and I think yeah. there's there are big answers of understanding who, who Morgan is and, and how she survived and, and her relation, mm-hmm. exact relationship to the night sisters, uh, Barris's ultimate choice, how she feels about the choices she made in the clone Wars. some of these big emotional answers are there, mm-hmm. but I kind of feel like that we're hyped, but we're also, we saw a lot, We saw, you know, it. we saw a lot because these episodes are not long. Um, mm-hmm. So I'm excited to see uh, a grievous fight against what looked like some f- flaming night sister scythes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm all for that. Let's go, let's go. But that's the scene, right? That's it. Yeah, uh, yeah. you know, and, and we know it now. Um, I mm-hmm. one of the moments that grabbed me the most, and this is a weird, a weird place to to wrap up our conversation. Uh, but Barris's bloody nose. Uh, you know, it's a great moment. It's a scene we've seen before of, of Grand Inquisitor kind of trying to, you know, teach her the like, you know, the whole mercy, everything that the Jedi taught you is weakness. Mm-hmm. Anger is the true strength. I'm going to drive mercy out of you. Um, big force push. Like, great. The the blood dropping on the floor in her nose is like it was just kind of a moment that's a little bit more uh, graphic, a little bit more brutal. And it felt a little kind of honestly fresh to me. Mm. Mm. a different way to make us feel a character's pain because Star Wars has, you know, traditionally, and I think for it's good, been light on blood. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, Mm -hmm. uh, uh, there's been a lot of cauterization, a lot of ambiguous lightning pains. (laughs) Yeah. But to just uh, viscerally see this, uh, I don't know how old she's supposed to be, teen, young adult. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Being bloodied was like, that was visceral. It hit me in in it. I agree. felt different so i'm i'm really excited to see in this show well those yeah. beats that make me feel the dark side in a visceral way you know it, it, it's it's organic pain right it's real it's blood yeah. it's coming from the inside i think you're right i i think it was a a, a wonderful moment too and just to look on her face and and again I, we'll find out her answers her choices and what she's actually thinking during that moment but i i agree with you it, it stood out Something yeah different. stood out yeah, very, very excited for this. Uh, I hope people uh, are continue to be excited for it. I'm excited for all of the possible tales of uh, the whatever in the future. But right now, I'm looking forward to May 4th and being able to just binge through these uh, episodes quickly. And we'll decide exactly how we're going to cover them. But very mm-hmm. excited for Tales of the Empire. Any final thoughts from you, Ken? No, excited as well. May 4th is a great way to uh, get these out. Do it every year. Do it every year. Tales of the Jedi, Rebellion, the Bounty Hunters, the Bartenders. You got a great idea there. Hey, we need <laughs> Tales of Mibra Gascon. Yes, Dave, right. finish that story. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Tales of the Janitors. We can get Opeepit's <laughs> full story. Opeepit. Bring it on. Bring it on. The rise of Opeepit. <laughs> <laughs> How did he choose? How did he choose? Uh, all right, Ken, you want to let people know where they can find us? I do. We got to get out of here. I got dogs barking. Chihuahuas in the background going crazy. We're Force Center uh, show. Uh, we can be found on social media uh, at Force Center Pod. Uh, that's uh, Twitter, Instagram, Threads, Hive, all those places. Uh, we are on Facebook at Force Center Podcast. We're on YouTube here if you're watching us uh, or if you're listening, go check us out over there. Subscribe. Hit that notification bell uh you can also get merch at tpublic.com slash user slash force center support us directly at patreon.com slash force center and you can follow me at cat knapsack go to my website cat joseph where can they find you and upcoming showings of any films 
Yeah, you can find me on all the social media at Joseph Scrimshaw is my handle. Um, I'm going to be updating my website, josephscrimshaw.com, with more showings of our horror short, The Nightmare. Adorable. Uh, it played a festival this past weekend and, and won an award. Hooray! Um, and uh, it's uh, coming up uh, another screening in, uh, I forget which one. So it's on my website, and it's coming up in, uh, it's there. in, in Seattle uh, the, uh, the May 4th weekend. So that's going to be an interesting adventure to balance a little bit of a horror convention and star wars hey perfect time for me to to roll around in the dark side so if you're interested in that and other filmmaking adventures you can find all the info on my website josephscrimshot.com ken take us home all right uh that is it we're gone we'll see you next time we'll, we'll, we'll go go fight <laughs> grievous bye see you next time here in force